Uh, today, we're going to explore the sculpture department and we're going to interview students. This is R147. Let's, Let's go. go. Today we're very honored to have Maria Alina Gonzalez um, for interview today, who is the chair of the sculpture department at SFAI. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so we we're wondering what made you become a sculptor uh, in the very beginning, and how is it like to make um, sculpture at SFAI? I think for me, it was always playing with dirt and making things in the carpentry shop and doing some drawings, but it was always playing with objects and things and the hammer and the dirt and pushing it into molds and things like that. Great. So how is it like, how is the sculpture department like at SFAI? What do you like about it? What are some like... We, we actually have a very well integrated sculpture department in the sense that we have the ceramics, the wood shop, the metal shop, all on the same floor. We also make some molds and plaster. So the communication between the areas is very fluid. What do you think about um, sculpture in the artwork, in the contemporary artwork today? And then where do you see it go in the future? Well, sculpture has branched out so much to encompass everything that's three-dimensional. So then we start talking about sculpture, but in the realm of installations. Mm -hmm. Then we also have sound as material. I work with sound myself, so there isn't an object per se, but it's still sculpture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So as far as like the future of it, I think being in the Bay Area and having the tech world basically down the hill. It will be interesting to see how we can bring that technology as far as like part of our vocabulary and see how the newer artists are going to be using that technology to define the future of sculpture. Hi guys, I'm at Ceramics right now. It's so quiet here, I have to keep my voice down. Let's go see what the students are working on right now. My name is Anais De Los Santos. I'm a junior at SFAI, and I study sculpture and ceramics. Mm -hmm. What are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on uh, kind of like puzzle pieces that form like a portrait of me as a young girl. Um, I'm glazing it right now. It hasn't been fired yet. It'll probably, I have to put it in the kiln to get fired, and um, I'll probably paint a little more, and then I'm going to put a gloss on top. So it's going to look really like glossy. <laughs> what do you think of the sculpture department of our school? I think it's great. I love it. I come here every day to work. Um, it's like a second home for me. Yeah. So Steven is a sculpture student and uh, we're going to ask him what he does. So Steven, what do you do in SFAI? Yeah, because SFAI is a very multi... Like, SFAI is a what? It's a multimedia school or like multi-culture. I don't know exactly how to say it, but it's like just do anything you want to do is exactly the goal of like SVI. So for me, I'm doing the structure in the behind. It's like I'm doing the structure for the painting. And uh, I'm very interested with this kind of uh, like ideas, like how to show in a piece in a space how painting can expand more. So this is the idea I'm playing right now. It's like now painting becomes a 3D sculpture. I like that. Okay, let's go see what how we do it in the woodshop. Hi, welcome. My name is Gabe. I manage the studios. Today we're going to be doing a woodshop training and covering the table saw. So the table saw is a very useful tool that we have here. Um, it does a lot of cuts. It does them precisely. It does large pieces, small pieces, and quite a few angles. It's probably one of the, one of the most used pieces in the shop. Um, the table saw is composed of a few different areas. So come over here and I'll show it to you. So this is it. The, the table saw area includes this table here, the machine itself, and this backspace, all right? The machine is located here, your on-off switch, 
is right down here. Uh, this is the fence along here, and then right here is where the blade sits. Okay, so when you're cutting, things not to do. Do not wear gloves. Keep the sleeves short. And do not have earbuds in your ear when you're working in the shop. And you also can never free cut on the table saw. You must always use the fence. I see Tony's giving his class here. Let's go have a look. Uh, Tony Labat, uh, director of the MFA program, and I also teach. Uh, what you have here is the What's Cooking class students, and uh, one of the sort of like projects, if you will, that one of the students suggested or proposed was that since we had ceramics here in the school to make some dishes and plates and, uh, and so forth. So that's what we're doing. They're all making plates so that we can eat on them. It's like there are a lot of Nurana students working here. I heard that there are a lot of connections between the sculpture and Nurana department. Oh, Jeff is here. He must know all about the history. Let's go ask him. A sculpture starts very early. They very early on in the 19th century they have sculpture. They have sculpture that goes hand in hand with painting in the 19th century. So it runs a whole range of things. Um, people like John Roloff, who did these huge, elaborate, beautiful kind of environmental kinds of sculptural things. Somebody like Sergeant Johnson, who was an artist, African American artist, who does did these beautiful sculptures of. Uh, that are at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art right now, who was here in the 1920s or so. And so all those people were hugely influential in all of our students who've gone out there in the world to do sculpture as well. You probably know of the new genres department here, which was started as the performance video department. And that started out in the sculpture department as well. Those classes were first taught by Howard Freed in the sculpture department. And he thought of himself as an artist, like everybody here does, first and foremost. And then they sort of get pigeonholed in their mediums occasionally. But he thought of those performance things that he did and the video pieces he did as three-dimensional things that I think really resembled that seems sculptural in a lot of ways. It's sort of like when people talk about filmmaking as being painterly, painterly film, and you think, yeah, that's probably true. So it's sort of this funny blend. And so students invent all these things. You know, the, the faculty sometimes in the administration here tries to pigeonhole it and say, well, you should have a major in a certain thing or do whatever. But the students sort of invent across areas and cross paths in all different ways. So I found an interesting brochure of David Island's past exhibition. Let's go back to 2016. Lucien is waiting there. So we're here on Chestnut Campus, and this is the McBean Gallery. Today we're going to see a show from David Island. He was, well, he was a student here, as well as a teacher here, and um, he was a printmaking student. And so his, his understanding of the world of art really came through printmaking in a lot of ways. He's considered a conceptual artist, but then a lot of his work is very sculptural. Like even his house is very sculptural. The David Ireland house that he has, you know, you think, why is this even considered art rather than just work by you know, somebody who remodeled his, his home as an eccentric? But then you realize that there is this artistic impulse to it all, and that it truly is sculptural in a lot of ways, and that it's truly conceptual. My home is at 500 Cap Street. It serves as my primary source for material and inspiration. I convert my home into a state of mind and invite many young artists to show their creative works in this immersive architectural work and social environment. Next week, painting department. See you then.